Hello, welcome to my channel. Some time ago, I created a flashcard program and made a video about how I did it. I was reminded recently that I neglected to include footage of what the program looked like when it ran. I peeked at the code the other day, and while perfectly fine, I have advanced a bit in my use of Windows, especially in terms of how easy it is to read the code. At least, that's my opinion. Because of this, I've rewritten my flashcard program. It took only a few hours from start to finish, so it is a very simple program, but it should be easy for you to modify. Also, feel free to ask me questions in the comments if something isn't clear. As usual, I've uploaded my code onto my GitHub repo, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Okay, so the program. Last time I forgot to include a movie of what the program looked like running. I'm not going to do that this time. Here it is. In what follows, first I go over the structure of the program and then dive into the nuts and bolts of how to construct a flashcard program using Python and Pygame. As usual, I begin the program in the main module. This is a convention I've adopted because it allows me to go back to programs I wrote years ago and easily find the module that runs the program. Okay, now let's go to the function I've called main. This is not essential, but I made a splash screen for the demo. I've included the class I used for this in the code I uploaded to GitHub. Next, I call the function I've named subloop. Here's an overview of the program structure. First, I ask the user which quiz they are interested in. If the user doesn't wish to select a quiz, then they can quit the program. In this case, the splash screen is presented again, and then we stop the program. Second, ask the user to select which action they would like to do with the quiz they've selected. So they could take a quiz, they could view statistics for that quiz, or they could reset the scores. Since this video is about how to create a flashcard program using Python and Pygame, I will only go over that part of it. If you would like to view how to record and display stat, take a look at the code I've uploaded to GitHub. So Anyway, before we get started, let me say a word about this line at the top of the dialogs module. I use it to position a window on the screen. I mention this because you may need to adjust these values depending upon the size of your monitor. As you can see, I've set the X coordinate at 1000 and the Y at 400, but if you're having trouble seeing the window, perhaps adjust it to 11 so it will appear in the upper left hand corner of your screen. Okay, so the quiz. I like to make my module names descriptive, so I've implemented the quiz in the appropriately named quiz.py module. Before I talk about that though, let's take a quick look at the file structure. As usual, I have set up a data directory. Within that directory, I have another directory named quizzes and another named users. Let's look at the quizzes directory first. Here are the simple example quizzes I developed. First, let's look at testing 01. This quiz is, as you can see, purely for development and debugging purposes. This look at the countries and capitals quiz. Again, this is a very simple quiz. A question is asked, for example, what is the capital of France? Then three options are given, each of which is the name of a city in France. Finally, at the bottom of the record, the answer is given. That is, whether the correct answer is option one, option two, or option three. And that is it for the quizzes. It's very, very simple. Now let's look at the contents of the user directory again. As you can see, I've created a directory there that has my name, Chris. In that directory is another named scores. So let's look at the scoring for the capitals quiz. As you can see, I recorded the name of the user as well as the name of the quiz. Strictly speaking, this isn't necessary, so feel free to modify the file. Then we have the index. Of course, this must be unique. Then I record how many times the question was answered correctly, as well as how many times the question was presented. This allows me to display to the user only those questions that they are weakest on. Okay, back to the program. Recall that when the quiz module is run, the user is presented with a question, as well as three possible answers. For the quiz to run, the class dialog quiz must be called. When we do, the initialization function is called and a number of variables are initialized. Of particular note are the final lines of the initialization procedure, self x and self y. Notice that self x is set to the x axis of a rectangle plus 10. This rectangle will appear behind whatever text the user types. As you can see, I used this function to initialize three rectangles. We will see these again when we go over the draw function. So there's a user rec, and this is the light gray rectangle at the bottom of the window. There's user rec 2, and this is a darker gray rectangle at the top of the window. And user rec 3 is a medium gray rectangle behind the title of the quiz. Okay, next we read in the data that this class will need to operate properly. The first thing we do is grab the flashcard class and read in its data. That's pretty simple. 
Then we set the current index variable and read in the first question. And of course, we format this for display. The valid choices are then specified. In this case, one, two, and three for each of the choices. We also specify space because it will be needed to advance to the next question. Okay, so far so good. I hope that's clear. If it's not, please do leave a comment. Okay, so the main function. After all the data is read in, we then call the main function of the dialog quiz class. As you can see, this is a very simple, very basic class. Now let's look at the handle events function. The handle events function is pretty straightforward and it's pretty much the same for any program you're going to use it. So I'm just going to focus on those aspects of the function that I've changed for this particular program. As you can see, when the escape key is pressed, self dot keep looping is set to false. As a result, the while loop will exit. The last line of handle events is self dot user text, and then you add event Unicode. As you can see, I also monitor the backspace key to detect whether it has been pressed. If it has, then I delete the character that was most recently added to the variable self dot user text. When, in a moment, we look at the draw function, we will see that the self.userText variable is drawn to the screen every tick of the clock, so the user's keystrokes will be displayed on the screen. Since most of the really interesting things happen when the return key is pressed, let's look at that now. The first thing we do is read the data that is in user text into text. Just so it's preserved. If whatever is in self text is not a valid choice, then we turn the background of the text window to red and set self user text to the empty string. If a valid key has been pressed, so that would mean either one, two, or three, then we display the result. We display what the correct answer is as well as which answer the user chose. All of this information is placed in the self dot display list. Again, if the answer is correct, then the background of the window is turned green, and if it is not, then it is turned red. In order to see the next question, the user then presses the space key. When the user presses the space key, I check to see first whether an answer was given. If it wasn't, then I redisplay the question and exit handle events. If it was, then the background of the window is set to white and the next question is loaded. If all the questions have been displayed, then we ask the user whether they would like to take the test again or whether they would like to quit. Either way, I save the data before leaving the function. Okay, only one more function to go over draw. This function does just what it says. It draws everything that is to be displayed onto the screen. Remember in the beginning I talked about user rect and then user rect 2, user rect 3. This is what is now being drawn to the screen. And those rectangles just draw blocks of color, no text. I hope all that is pretty clear. I draw the text to the screen using a very handy function I keep in my utils.py module called talk dialog. I've made it so that that function will accept either a string or a list of strings. Pretty much everything that is displayed is displayed through display list. And really, that's it. So I hope, I hope you got something out of that. Again, the code is up on GitHub. Please go and download it and look at it and run it. If you have any questions, please do leave a comment and I'll get back to you. Well, thank you for listening and good coding.